What is a common myth about your country that is 100% false but many people still believe in it? Romania. Many people believe we have vampires, but in my 700 years of living here, I haven't even seen one. I asked my mates back in the castle and they also haven't seen any, and they've been around for longer than I. Something's wrong here, I can feel it. Iceland was not named as part of some conspiracy to keep folks away from a good thing. The name comes from the fact that early settlers arrived during summer and then suffered horrible losses of livestock and people once winter hit and icebergs were seen filling the fjords. It was more of a warning than anything that this place sucked. Greenland on the other hand was probably named as such to make it sound more hospitable. Parts of Greenland were actually fairly green when it was named in 1000 AD, at least in the southwestern corner where Eric the Red landed, thanks to the Gulf Stream taking a slightly different route back then. Kenyans are all long distance runners, live in huts, speak no English, and have pet wild animals, ugh, so here goes. The long distance guys are mainly from one community tribe called the Kalenjin that's about 15% of the population. Next. Kenya is still a developing nation with a lot of poverty, but there's a lot of modern architecture. Next, the country is rated 18 out of 100 on the English Proficiency Index. And lastly, you can apply for a special, and rarely granted, permit for your bobcat named Babao, but keeping wildlife is not at all common, and the Kenya Wildlife Service will conduct regular visits to ensure Babao isn't being kept in Auschwitz like conditions. There was a popular documentary in the US about Kenyan runners and they basically lied. Said that Kenyans ran long distances to school while completely failing to mention that most Kenyans took the school bus and the kids they were featuring were running to school as training, not because they had to. People generally assume that when you're from Belgium, you are French speaking, while a big part of the country is francophone. The majority population is Flemish, Dutch speaking. I blame this on mostly three factors. People mainly visiting Brussels, which is bilingual, but has a francophone majority. Americans mostly having been stationed in the French speaking part in World War II. Hercule Poirot. I had two good friends who were Belgians. One spoke Flemish the other French. Neither spoke the other language. Their common language they spoke to each other was English. I always thought that was funny. Greece is not only beaches and islands. We also have beautiful places for the winter, many mountains and mainland attractions. Every corner have something interesting. Till, you'd save works for the Greek National Tourism Organization. Just kidding. The myth is that everyone here is always drunk on vodka and people all ride bears, play on balalikas and dance the kazachok and that we're either drunk or mad. 1. While there is a problem with alcoholism, a lot of people don't drink, especially not vodka. 2. Funnily enough, bears do appear, but very rarely, and the people that ride bears or have them as pets, they're considered unusual by other Russians. 3. Balalaika is dead I know one person that plays it and that's it. 4. We dance the Kazachok only ironically at this point lol. 5. We're not always mad. We're, just people, with emotions, but, a shankas are great and warm, so people do wear them. Not all of them though. Also are not all super people. A lot of people confuse different European countries. For Switzerland, you're often Swedish. I'd imagine it's similar for Belgium, Belarus, Slovakia, Slovenia. I'm from Serbia and people used to try and convince me it was a part of Russia. That's Siberia. That everyone still harbors resentment against Americans. Or the French. Or the Japanese. Or, you get the point, I've actually never met anyone here who held such grudges. It's pretty inspiring, actually, probably I can learn a lot from that. All Germans have some secret knowledge of the Second World War II they would love to share. I always found that interesting when I lived in London and s English people 40 plus would ask me of some first hand experience of the war. Keep in mind that not even my parents were born at the time. Fact we know the same as you do from history classes etc. No need to tell the allies about our secret moon bases. That the Irish are the biggest drunks in the world, completely false and mean as we're only the second biggest drinker in the world but we hope to get first place next year. If someone says isn't Ireland part of the UK though one more time. 
This even happens to well-educated continental Europeans. I'm Dutch, but I had to explain to a room full of university-educated colleagues that yes, sales in Ireland had to be mentioned separately from the ones in the UK, as it was a, incorrect and b, people would take umbrage. That we say shrimp on the barbie, it was an ad campaign to appeal to Americans. It was the most successful tourism campaign still to this day, but literally no one in Australia says that. And no one in Australia drinks Fosters. That Brazil is a huge tropical jungle in which people speak Spanish. Brazil actually has several major cities and different environments. Sao Paulo for instance is a huge sprawling metropolis with as many inhabitants as New York and Los Angeles combined. In some southern areas of the country it actually snows, and we were a Portuguese colony, so we speak Portuguese. Most people don't realize how freaking massive Brazil is, its northernmost point is closer to Canada than to its southernmost point. People think British people are either stiff upper lip public schoolboys or cockney bricklayers football hooligans. There's a whole world of people in between. Some of us don't even like football. One of my friends doesn't even drink tea. Not sure why she's my friend to be honest. We also have a very wide range of accents. It's not just posh Londoner or cockney Londoner. French here. That we don't shower. We do. Guys. We're not in the 1700s anymore. Also that French women don't shave. I mean. There are some that don't, but this has more to do with their personal choices and a general trend of having more and more women that don't shave around the world than their Frenchness. We do eat frogs and snails though. That we're unfaithful too, I've seen on Reddit more than once. I don't think we're more unfaithful than our European neighbors, or even Americans. Dracula is often depicted as living in Transylvania, while he was imprisoned there for a while. He was actually the ruler of Wallachia, another historic Romanian province that neighbors Transylvania to the south. As for the rumor that we are vampires, I neither confirm nor deny this statement. Castlevania fans know all about this. He also had a teleporting castle. Oh so much. According to popular opinion I should be a weed smoking, clog wearing tulip farmer living in a windmill. Can you guess where I am from yet? I know, I know, you're from that one place, you know, the one where everyone ice skates to work. That it's socially acceptable to call people C, you'll get away with it with your mates but you'll probably get your head stomped if you called the wrong person it in public. Also it's possible to be arrested for using it in public in certain circumstances. Get a load of this C. That the only thing we care about is rugby and we all live in hobbit holes. I. For one, I'm absolutely terrified of rugby but I'm Kiwi as, bro. Not exactly myth but decent amount of PPL still think that Czechoslovakia still exists. We split apart in 1993. We are Czech Republic, not Czechoslovakia anymore. I had a friend who used to answer to people asking where he is from. I come from a country that no longer exists. When I started dating my now wife, who is from Oklahoma, she informed me that her friends and family were convinced that Canadians didn't have ice or toilet paper. They wanted her to ask me about it apparently because they were confused by that. I had never laughed so hard. I mean, it's Canada. We are I 70% of the year basically. Woo. Singaporean here. 1. No. We're not part of China. We're not even in the same region. Yes. The population is 60% ethnically Chinese, but that doesn't make us part of China any more than it makes the USA part of Britain. As a matter of fact, there's a problem of racism against mainlander Chinese, since locals tend not to see them as true Singaporeans. This is exacerbated by the fact that lots of mainlander Chinese are pretty pro-China, human rights violations and all, while the local Chinese don't like China and the CCP very much. We're closer culturally to Taiwan. 2. It is not illegal to be naked inside your own home. You can be stalkers while bathing or fricking if you like. You just cannot use I am in my own home as a defense against streaking or showing everyone your rude bits. 90% of the population live in government apartments and we don't need pervs flashing their dongs through their windows. Incidentally, this law came about because pervs were flashing their dongs through their windows. Singapore used to have a big flasher problem back in the 80s, 
Times are weird. 3. It is not illegal to chew gum, only to import sell it or bring it onto the trains. This is because dickheads used to literally gum up the train doors and make everyone late for work. The government put up with it for a few months and then said frick it, no more gum for everyone. This is why we can't have nice things. 4. The government doesn't fine people for every little offense anymore. They used to, but enforcement has become lenient in the last two decades. Sadly, this means there's a ton of litter where the streets used to be pristine. Still, you might not want to litter or spit right in front of a police officer. Incidentally, this law came about because pervs were flashing their dongs through their windows. That we roam around with wild animals like lions and rhinos, have no cities and thus live in huts, and that we're all poor and malnourished. Yeah I've heard Yorkshire's not quite as bad as people make out. I'm American but I lived in Egypt for a while. It's incredible that more than one American who wasn't a child asked me if I lived in a pyramid. That we all knew Steve Irwin. Like sure thing we've all shared many a bush chuck tinnies with old mate Steve O down the local. We are all rudes if you don't speak French. We don't shower shave. We all like wine cheese baguette and France can be summarized as Paris. The image most people outside of Europe have of Austria. Do you really think that we are always wearing lederhosen and dirndl? That we all are living in the Alps and that we yodel from one mountain hill to another to stay in touch with our neighbors? Actually, would be pretty great tbh. Austria has a lot of kangaroos and dangerous spiders. Sweden is a socialist paradise. It's neither socialist, nor a paradise, though it is a nice country to live in except for the weather. Australian here, glad you asked. Everyone thinks it's as dangerous as frick, that spiders, drop bears, snakes, feral cats and dogs will rip your fricking heart out every time you step out the door. The truth is that unless you act like a halfwit, poke said snake spider with your finger then you'll be fine. Battle echidna, dervish spiders, saltwater crocodiles and drop bears don't live in suburbia. You need to go into the bush to even see a lizard which usually promptly fricks off the moment a stone-footed oompa loompa waddles past. We're all ginger alcoholics who hate the English and run amongst the hills in our skirt screaming freedom. Correct. You also get blonde and brown-haired Scots. Indians don't speak English. I was asked once how I'm so good at English. Like we are literally the second largest English speaking country. My grandparents grew up in India and they always talk about this, because when they came over, in the 50s and 60s, they just sounded Welsh and everyone was shocked that they spoke such good English. Many still believe chewing gum is banned in Singapore and if you are caught with it, you will get caned. The reality is that in the 1990s it used to be completely banned but today, only selling it is illegal. Dental chewing gum is also allowed in Singapore. Somehow some people think that Brazilians speak Spanish and only like soccer and carnival. The soccer and carnival thing is mostly true but Spanish? Really? Most people can't tell Portuguese and Spanish apart so there's that. Pair that up with having only vague idea on what European country invaded what plot of land back in the day and you got a reason for the confusion. The this isn't about all of the US, but the idea that just because someone has the southern US accent, country, rural, Appalachian, etc, they are automatically not the brightest. A lot of people, even some in the US, especially in the New England area, seem to have this idea. It's honestly just kinda classist, and one of the reasons a lot of people in these rural areas are very skeptic of people from the north cities. I get that it comes down to grammar and stuff, but it's a dialect, just like AAV or Ulster Irish. And it's just the way we are raised to talk. It has nothing to do with intelligence. And it's sad, because I know a few people who went to school up north, and they changed their accent completely when they moved to try and blend in more. People often expect southerners to be simple farmers who don't have much of an education. I literally read online once that it was specifically about in the US, but I'm sure it happens in other places too. The general American accent will be pretty much the only one because of movies TV social media. It's kinda sad, and makes me want to preserve the accent. 
Germany. World War 2 is a huge taboo topic and everybody just pretends it didn't happen. I've had multiple US exchange students here in Germany ask me if I knew about Hitler and the Nazi regime. And apparently they expected me to go ha. Huh? What? No. Please educate me about my own history. Apparently this stems from a misunderstanding about not being allowed to do a Nazi salute in Germany, which has a completely different reason. I feel like Russia is commonly hated especially lately. Not that there are no reasons for that hug. Huh? I have a strong feeling that people simultaneously think that Russia is a dangerous shithole and that we all here love and support Putin and his government. Both of those things are not true. Well. Some parts of Russia are poor and I myself have friends from different places who have only 10-15k rubles monthly to spend, $150 200. At the same time, even though I am pretty privileged being born and raised in Moscow in an upper middle class family, have a flat that I don't need to pay rent loan for, my husband's family got it for free during the USSR period. My very first job ever pays me enough money to spend on anything I want except for big purchases like a new iPhone or a car. I have a degree. Not for free but for reasonable money. $2,500 a year. And last year our free healthcare literally saved my life yeah I know. Taxes. I pay them. No big deal. The small quality of life things we have. I haven't used any cash in years. Everything can be paid via Apple Google Samsung Pay. Even in the smallest shops. Our delivery services are on point. I can order any groceries I want via an app and they will deliver them in 7-15 minutes. Moscow is covered in car-sharing cars and, even though we don't have our own car, we don't need it because parking prices are high and car-sharing cars are literally on every corner here. UPD. Another cool thing I forgot to mention. We have our own tech ecosystem made by Yandex that almost everybody here uses. It consists of a virtual assistant with a home pod. One subscription for music, movies and other bonuses. Food delivery service, taxi aggregator, car sharing service, etc. And everything with a cashback. They also develop autopilot electric cars. About Putin, none of my friends support him. Most of the young people here want to emigrate to not have anything in common with him. Most important part, Russia is full of culture, literature, language, music, nature, food, people, their stories. It's all amazing and deserves some love. That everyone in Japan works crazy hours and never has enough time or energy for things they want to do. People on average work longer hours than mainland Europe sure, but work less hours than the US so that's BS. In France everyone believes the opposite, that we do the bare minimum and are on vacation all the time. Yeah that's not true. My dad is a university professor and he works a lot, while my mom works in tech and it seems to be worse. I've never seen a mime in Paris. Australia. A surprising amount of people, mostly tourists, think that the hoop snake is an actual thing considering the lethality of our wildlife. I thought that's what drop bears eat. I live in South Africa. Many people still believe we have wild animals roaming around and crap. And people living in huts etc. That does happen in certain parts of Africa but I live in the suburbs of Cape Town. We have better internet than some first world countries. That we all have the same accent sound the same way when we speak. People watch a lot of British TV and assume we all speak an RP. Or like Londoners, when there's a pretty broad range of accents here in the UK. Like, Northern or Midlands accents are wildly different to ones in the South, and don't even get me started on Welsh, Scottish or Irish accents. Strong Jedi accent is just a noise to me. And, I know this is unfair, but a strong Birmingham accent is like nails on a chalkboard to me. Sorry brummies. That we are friendly, that we live in a utopia, that we're one of the happiest countries to live in. Look at the two dumb fricks in charge of Alberta and Ontario and how they've been handling things. Kenny ran on a herd at least I ain't the NDP platform. And now he's underhandedly trying to privatize healthcare. 
Doug Ford ran on a gotta get a sumo that dollar be a brother campaign. And now he's cut sick days and has gone out of his way to make COVID worse since he doesn't have a coherent message. Stay home but also businesses are still open but you won't get compensated and there's no sick days and the cops will stop you for being outside but you also still need to shop and consume but also we're extending the lockdown even though everything is open and now we're gonna just close the legislative assembly and pray cover just magically disappears. We are just as stupid as the next country, we are just as mean spirited as the next country. Just because we say sorry when someone bumps into us doesn't mean we're friendly. It's a tick that's been ingrained in us since birth that's no different than someone from New York telling you to frick off. That Japan is incredibly efficient and futuristic. Major lol. So futuristic here that I can't even pay my bills online. And if I want to set up an auto paying bill I have to request a form by mail. Fill it out. And then take it to the bank in person. Not to mention I have to send in all my monthly reports by fax. We aren't all overweight people wearing old navy american flag t-shirts and khaki shorts. Only, like, 60% of us. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.